All right, it's very simple. Uh, white stone. I've had a couple of beers. I think I started with the Kolsch. What was the first one? I've been brewing Kolsch. I did not succeed, so I will talk about that a different time. But uh, finally, they have some of the IPAs out. So this is a lovely day IPA. It says right here, double dry hopped, West Coast style, uh, creating hoppy notes of pine and citrus with a light malt body. It is 6.8%. So it's something definitely to uh, just be worried about, you know, if you're out in the heat. Uh, I will say, side note, always, as I learned the hard way, I was young, uh, before I joined the military, I was at a friend's house. Everyone's there, family was just hanging out, having, you know, grilling and, I was having a few drinks and I was like, hot tub, because I didn't, never really grew up with one, you know, so it's my song when I loved hanging in there and I was just, you know, throwing beers back because I can handle it. But when you're in a hot tub and your temperature rises, you get a little drunker, faster, harder, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I lost my hamburger to a dog because I fell asleep. So watch out for them hot tubs. That's, that's a PSA right there. <laughs> just trust me. <laughs> so anyways, I got a clean glass. It's not really uh, frosted. It's just a uh, cool, uh, I was finally catching up on all my comments and if you really want to enjoy the beer, if you really have enjoyed hops, you don't want it too cold because it actually blocks a lot of the flavors, but like white wine, you want it enough chilled. So as you're hanging out and you're talking and you're sipping, now don't get me wrong, if you're a slow sipper, go cold because obviously you're not going to get here. I'm a little bit faster so I can go cool. I'll be here before it even, even starts to really warm up, especially if it's a good beer. So it's pretty clear. Doesn't look hazy or anything. Smells gorgeous. Oh, that's like funky citrus pine tree right there. That's crazy. That really, yeah, they nailed it on the head with all their descriptions. Damn, that's good. So it does have a slight strong, straight up bitter, but then you get a delicate pine and orange citrus kind of feel. Almost like an orange feel, but it's very mellow, but it definitely stands out. So you got a lot of flavor going on, but it has like a little zing on your tongue, so. All right, thank you, Whitestone. They did great on their cold, that was a good one. This is what the can looks like. Uh, so if you want a more casual IPA, uh, not too much, uh, like I can't do grapefruit. So this one, it starts to push that threshold as the same zing as grapefruit IPAs. So if you're not big on uh, grapefruit ones, this is probably more where you wanna be. I can enjoy this more because of the piney notes. I enjoy the pine tree and the grassiness, those things they're easy to me, they're gorgeous, they're recognizable. Uh, grapefruit, even though I can handle some at a certain point, it's on the, my tongue, my tongue just bleh, just doesn't deal with it. So there you go, pretty good. Oh, very nice. I like it. It's definitely a little bold, so it's something you sip on, you hang out, you talk. When it starts to get warm, you feel the difference. You just go ahead and uh, kill it and chill for a while. Just enjoy it. I'm gonna say this is outdoorsy morning time. If you're just chilling off that day, I wouldn't go mow the lawn with this. It's like when you come back into the house for the day, you're resting, you're hanging, you're talking to some friends, you're hanging out. This is more of that kind of beer. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this is something that informative. <clears throat> uh, these are pretty much local beers. So if you're not really near the south, southeast side of Texas, I'm not sure how far out they go. So if you do happen to be out there and you know this one, because there's more that are spread out that way that aren't as abundant or popular but they're slowly catching up and they're coming into Austin and Houston and uh like if I go to Houston I get a lot of Houston beer breweries of course you go to Dallas Fort Worth you get all their local breweries but they still have some of these beers going that way but it's very little so as you go into those ones you will get exposure to more of their breweries and you might see a couple of them that made it by so I'm just trying to see the ones that made it by this one's not too too far away if I remember Cedar Park so anything near here uh, should make it to Houston most of the time. It just depends on the buyers and they'll usually go with their local one because you want it fresh. You want it kind of close to the window and these ones could be pushing a little bit. But if they know what they're doing and they have the right customers in the right area to sell, then they'll expand it greatly, you know, so some of them do great. But if you're around college towns, it varies from spot to spot because mostly, you know, it's college kids just want a lot of booze for cheap price. That is not a good market. So you got to find a little place out of your way where they're a little more crafty and it might be a little pricey, but then you'll get more of the variety you want. So hopefully that's helpful information helps you be a smarter hunter looking for that beer. But other than that, uh, do drink safe and have a good night.